Hello, this is Patrick at 1CNC West, and what I'd like to do in this video is show you a really powerful feature within 1CNC. It's called 3-axis repositioned. Now, 3-axis repositioned is for when you simply want to machine multiple sides of a part. Now, I want to show you the old-fashioned way of machining multiple sides of a part, and then I want to show you 3-axis repositioned and how it can save you time. Okay, all right, so first of all, here's, here's an earlier method for machining different sides of a part without using three axis reposition. So here we have a part, and the first thing we'd probably do is put this in a vise. I'm going to show you the stock real quick, and we probably have the vise jaw clamping here and the other vise jaw over there, and that's going to be holding the stock, and we would probably go in and we would just machine this area out here, probably machine this area out as well. In fact, I've kind of done that here with the Z-level roughing operation. So that would be the first setup, all right? So if we had 30 parts, we would machine that for all 30 parts. Now when that's done, Within one CNC, the way we used to do things is we would take this part, we would rotate it, put it on a different layer, and we'd have something that looks like this, right? So this is a this is the same part just rotated on a separate layer. And then using a new toolpath group, we would probably face it, right? Because we want to get rid of that want to get rid of that stock that we had originally and then we would perform the pocket operation. I've kept the machining operations to a minimum just so you get the idea. Okay, and then after we machined all 30 parts machining this side, we would take the part out, and then within one CNC, we'd have yet another layer where we have a copy of that part, and we have it rotated around, and then we would have a, another toolpath group for the side, I've named it side three, and we would probably do the little profile operations to machine the fillets, and then we would perform a drilling operation. Okay, so this works fine, and at the end of the day, this would create three separate CNC programs, one for side one, one for side two, and one for side three. Okay, no problem. But there's an easier way, a more efficient way, called three-axis repositioned, and that's what I'd like to show you how to do here. Okay, so I have another part. It's actually the same part, but it, there's just only one copy of it. So here we just have one part. You can see I just have one layer here called part. I have another layer called boundaries. And those that's just simply the layer for my, my wireframe boundaries there, okay? So here's how you would use three axis reposition. Let's turn the boundaries on. Okay, so for the first side, I have the part actually all aligned up perfectly for the first side. I've got my datum in the upper left-hand corner here. All right, so I'd, I'd want to perform my tool path. So I would come over here, and let's just use Z-level rough on this. And we're going to be using, let's see, let's let's use a, oh, that's fine. A, a, that's fine, 0.625 diameter end mill. I'm going to just leave the parameters they were, the way they are here and just try to blast through this quick here. Let's use high speed close. We'll click next, and I'm just going to plunge just to get the job done. We'll say the depth of cut looks fine. And we're going to use picked for our boundary, and I'm just going to select that blue boundary right there. All right, so the, this video really isn't about toolpath. It's going to focus on the three-axis reposition. Okay, so let's say that that's done. All right, we've, we've machined all we can for that first side. In fact, if we came up here and we used our simulate toolpath, and I'm going to use the stock model, which is just simply that stock I showed you earlier on that layer there. And if we simulate this, this is all we have so far. And this is just going to be the first side. All right, I'll speed this up just a little bit. Okay, and so that's what we have done so far. And, and the vice, remember our vice, we have our movable vice jaw here, and we have our solid vice jaw over here at the bottom. So that's what that part looks like right now after, after we machine side one. Okay, so now we want to machine side two. All right, so I'm going to just take the part, and I'm just taking the display here. I, I'm not physically rotating the part. I'm just rotating the display. So here we go. Here's the part. We want to machine this side right here. All right, now, so that we don't have to physically make a copy of the part, rotate it, put it on a separate layer, and so on, all we need to do is work with construction planes. And when we work with construction planes, we just want to make a construction plane for each side that we want to machine. We don't have to do it for the first side. First side's already taken care of for us. We don't need to worry about that. But on the second and third side, we're going to need to create a construction plane. Now, more importantly, we want the 
the datum, the x0, y0, z0 of that construction plane to be exactly where we want it out there on the machine tool. So remember for side two, I probably want my my datum, my x0, y0, z0 to be in this corner. So two things we have to do. We're going to make a construction plane and then we're going to make sure that the datum of the construction plane is right at that location right there because that's going to be the x0, y0, z0 for the second side. Okay, so let's make a construction plane. We're going to come over here. These are your construction plane tools. And the tool that I suggest most to use for this type of application is this option here called three, uh, Create Plane from Points. More specifically, this is going to create a construction plane through three points. The first point you digitize, that's going to be X0, Y0, Z0. The second point you select, I'm just clicking with the left mouse button, that's X positive. And the third point you select, that's going to be Y positive. Okay. So we have this construction plane that's created. If you want to see it, we can always turn it on here. Okay, and you can see we've got our construction plane created. Now the only thing we need to do now though is we need to move the datum of the construction plane so it's over there on that corner. That's real easy to do. Let's come in here and we're going to use our position construction plane tool and I'm simply just going to snap right there. Okay, so there we go. We've created a construction plane. It's on this face. This is going to be side two. Uh, this is going to be X positive going in that direction, Y positive in that direction, and Z positive up. Everything looks great. So let's save that construction plane. Let's go over here and we're going to click save. And I'm just going to call this side two. All right, and we're going to click OK to that. And that looks great. Now while we're at it, let's make the construction plane for the third side as well. Okay, so let's use that same tool we used before. Create plane through three points. I'm going to rotate this around a little bit. That looks good. And we're going to, we're going to say the first point, that's x0, y0, z0. Second point, that's going to be x positive. And you can really just snap any point up here. That's going to be y positive. That looks good. Now let's create some target points to locate our construction plane. Let's make a point that's at the intersection of this line and that line. So that's a theoretical location right there. You can do the same over here. Just hover over that line and that line. Move over here and you can easily create points at those intersections. Okay, so now that I physically have geometry there, we can go back into our construction plane tool and let's use our, our move construction plane and let's put it right here and you can put it on either one makes no difference but I'm gonna put it there and I'm gonna say that's it that's gonna be our side three everything's perfect the axes are in the right direction the datum the x0 y0 z0 is where I want it I'm gonna say all that looks good and so let's save that construction plane we're gonna click save and we're gonna call that side three alright so before I go any farther let me just explain what we're doing we are creating a construction plane for each side that we want to machine except the first side because the first side was already set up for us. It was already in nice relationship to the world coordinate system. We didn't, we're just using the default construction plane for the, uh, for the first, for the first side that was being machined there. So we didn't need to make a construction plane for that, but we did make a construction plane for side two which is this side here, and we made another construction plane for side three. Okay, all right, so that's all we've done so far, and we're going to be using construction planes to tell one CNC what side needs to be machined. Okay, so now let's machine the second side. Now, I want to create a, a, a separate CNC program for the second side. So if I want to do that over here within the toolpath group or within the NC manager, I need to make a new toolpath group because this first toolpath group just machined the first side, right? Well, I want to make a new toolpath group to machine the second side. So I'm going to right hand mouse click, going to click new group, right? And that's going to be, this is, this is the active toolpath group now. And all I have to do is this. Let's come up here to our axis control and we're going to say three axis repositioned. And what this does is this tells one CNC to use the current construction plane for the really for the coordinate system for the and also for the X0, Y0, Z0. 
I'll click OK. Let's come down here to our construction plane, construction planes, and let's select side two. I'll click close on that. And so that's it. All we have to do now is just machine the part. So let's do it. Let's come over here to our tool paths. I'm just going to use a facing operation. Grab that boundary there. I'm just going to use the tool that's already in there for this. Z0 is fine. Approach. Because again, this is this video is not about how to make the tool pass, it's how to use three axis of repositioning. So there we go, there's the facing operation for that. One CNC knows that's the side we want to machine because we've selected construction plane two. Let's perform a pocket operation now. I'm going to grab that boundary and again I'll just use the defaults on everything here just to speed this up. Okay, there's a tool path for that. So there is side two machined. Now we want to machine side three. Okay, so all I need to do is come down here to our construction planes and all I have to do is select side three. Now one CNC knows that we need to machine this side. Now because I want a separate CNC program, I'm going to make a new toolpath group. I'm going to right hand mouse click, new group. I want to activate this. I'm going to right hand mouse click and select activate group. So this is now activated. And now we can perform whatever type of machining operations we want to perform on here. So for example, we might want to perform Oh, let's perform the little profile operation to machine these fillets here. I'm going to grab that fillet. Let's grab that one there. That looks good. I'm going to use the same tool that we used earlier on the pocket operation. And for the depth, minus 200. I'm going to say that's fine. And that looks fine. Don't need an extra finish pass. There's my lead in and lead out. So that looks very good. There's the, the machining of the little fillets there. Let's machine the holes now. I'm just going to use drill single, arc center. Just going to left click those arc centers. Click finish. I already have a tool selected. It's a quarter inch drill. Turret position number four. And yep, my depth's fine at minus 100, at minus 400 thousands. I'm going to use a can cycle. So I have machine cycle, G83. And I'll use a pec depth of uh, 125 thousands. All right, so there's the drilling operation. Okay, so there we go. What we've done now is we've machined all three sides and we only have one part. We didn't have to take that part, make copies of it, rotate it, put it on different layers and so on. All we had to do is make a construction plane for each side that we want to machine except the first side because the first side's already it's already set up for us. Now, one of the really nice things about this is when you perform your simulation, you can simulate the entire part. You can simulate all of these different toolpath groups. Let me show you. If we uh, just highlight any toolpath group and right click, instead of simulate, if you select this, that's just going to simulate just that one toolpath group. But if you select simulate all, that's going to simulate all the toolpath groups. Let's use that stock model. We'll click OK on that. And let's, let's slow that down a little bit. So here's the first side. I'm going to make the tool holder translucent so we can look through there. So there's our first side and we're coming in here and remember I kept the tool path to a minimal. I probably would have want a helix in or zigzag ramp but look at this. This is simulating us flipping the part over. There's our facing operation on the other side. Then we're going to do that little pocket operation. So I did helical approach on that and we're using high speed machining on that. That all looks very good. And when that's done, one CNC is going to simulate us flipping the part over, putting it in our fixture. There's a machining of that first little corner, second little corner, and then we're going to drill those two holes. So one of the real advantages to using the three axis reposition is not only that you can apply all your tool path to one part, but when you perform your simulation, you're going to end up with what that part really looks like. Okay, you won't, you wouldn't be able to do that. You wouldn't be able to have the same type of result if you would have used this strategy here, where you had three different parts. And if if you perform a simulate all on this, the toolpath's going to be all over the place. You've got your roughing here. You've got your facing over there. And that's because, remember, we had these parts all on different layers and at different orientations, okay? So 
yes, you can do it this way if you want to, but I really suggest you take a look at the 1CNC 3-axis reposition command. I think you'll really like it. Very powerful. So, 3-axis repositioned. Hope you like this video. Thank you so much for watching. And if you're in the California area, if you're considering a CAD CAM system, or if you'd like to purchase a fantastic CAD CAM system with excellent support, call us at area code 909-931-7811. Thanks again, and I'll talk to you later.